Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And today I would like to talk about operational transconductance amplifiers. Operational transconductance amplifiers aren't at all like regular operational amplifiers. They're very useful in synthesizer design, so they play a prominent role in my analog circuits for music synthesis class. In this video, I'm going to assume you're already familiar with OTAs. If you're not, I would invite you to check out lecture four from my ECE 4450 class. The 3080 is a common OTA in older designs. Wait, not that 3080. This 3080, which consists of a single operational transconductance amplifier in an IC package. Unfortunately, the 3080 is out of production. Nowadays, you can use the 13700, which actually has two OTAs and an IC package, along with some linearization diodes that you can use or not, however you like, and a couple of Darlington buffers that, again, you can use or not, however you like. The OTA core of a 13700 is very close to the 3080, so you can generally use half of a 13700 as a replacement for a 3080. You can just ignore the Darlington buffers and the linearization diodes. I want to take a look at the LB Designs website for the Monowave by Polymatics. This is the voltage-controlled filter in the Monowave. It's a Moog ladder and the differencing amp at the top of the ladder is an OTA, which strangely isn't being used in a mode where the current control pin has a varying current. It has a fixed current. So I think the OTA here is being used for its hyperbolic tangent distortion characteristics. So what's the bias current created by this 47K resistor? Well, the 47K is going from 12 volts to the input pin of the OTA, so we need to figure out what the voltage at the input pin of the OTA is. I should clarify the current input. I'm not talking about the voltage inputs. If we look at the datasheet for the 13700 and take a look at the schematic, we see that there's a current mirror down here at the current input, and it looks like there's two diode drops between the input and the negative rail. Let's see, so the voltage difference, I have 12 volts minus, minus 12 volts plus, let's say 1.4. So that corresponds to a guess of a 0.7 volt diode drop. And let's see, that's 22.6 volts. So if I divide that by 47, that gives me 0.48 milliamps. Now, what if we used a 3080 here instead? Well, if you look at the 3080 schematic, you'll see that there's only a single diode drop between the current input and the negative rail. So if we just dropped a 3080 in place of the 13700, we would need to put 0 0.7 here and take 23.3 .3 and divide that by 47, which gives me 0.4957. So not very much difference, but there is a slight difference there. Now, is it enough of a difference that you would want to adjust this resistor if you're switching from the 3080 to the 1700 or vice versa in your design? Probably not, but I did want to mention it. Now, if you're using some sort of transistor-based current source, like this exponential voltage-to-current converter in this Bergfurtron VCA, then you don't really need to worry about this distinction. But if you're effectively generating your control current with just a resistor network, like in the WASP filter shown here on Rene Schmitz's site, although this drawing is actually by Jürgen Heibel, then there might be a slight difference between the 3080 and the 13700, but probably not very much. If you know of other differences between the 3080 and the 13700 that designers should be aware of, let me know in the comments below.